Welcome to my spring garden tour. If you don't know me, my name is Patty, and I want to welcome you to my suburban garden. Uh, we've been here about a year, so I've learned a lot in the last year. I want to share the garden with you, how it looks today, and hopefully we'll go along weekly and just see what changes I make, what changes the seasons bring, and all of those fun things that happen in the garden. I have been gardening for, oh goodness, 30 years, probably over 30 years, um, but this is my first time in a zone that actually gets a true freeze. So I've been able to grow a few things that I have never been able to grow before, and I've also lost a few things that I would have never lost before. This is my chance to encourage those of you who have been gardening to never give up and those of you who have never started but have been thinking about it to give it a try we all make mistakes um, we all have successes it's just a learning process like anything else that you do just figure out what you want to grow buy a few plants and have at it so with that let's go ahead and start this garden tour for the spring of 2023. Welcome. Well, it is early April and I am finally getting around to shooting a perennial garden tour. Hopefully I'll be more consistent in doing this. Today we're just doing the perennial bed. Next week I'll show you what I'm growing in the vegetable garden. First section here is my shade garden. And last year I had my shade garden on the opposite side of our yard and this is my second year gardening here with that came a lot of learning um, they always tell you to make sure and know your garden before you start planting and by that where does the sun shine in the morning in the afternoon in the summer in the spring in the winter well it turns out this in the heat of the summer is the shadiest part of the house of the is the shadiest part of the garden and so i have moved my hellebore my hostas um, lamb's ear anything that just does better with a little shade in the afternoon has been moved here This corner section has actually proven one of the hardest for me to garden in. Um, the soil is really poor and by that it's like granite. So I have been amending it pretty heavily with rabbit droppings. Um, we are also under some beautiful pine trees um, which make for a glorious backdrop but um, the soil is very acidic because of the pine needles that they drop. So um, I have my blueberry bushes in here. I have three of them. And I also brought these succulents from our old garden and have placed them in this little uh, resin wine barrel. And they seem to be thriving back here. Moving along, we get into a sunnier area of the garden. And I forget the name of these pink and green bushes. They are so beautiful. I will pop it below after this video. But I have status and Nemesia, my husband moved these boxwoods 
um, along the back fence here for privacy and just for structure. Sometimes your garden just needs some green um, to kind of ground it. I also have some foxglove in here, which next month will be just beautiful. And the rest of my perennial berry bushes. There's raspberries and blueberries and grapes. I have a few new David Austin roses in here, which I am excited to see bloom this year. And a few new salvias. The dianthus is back from last year, as is the coreopsis. A few Gerber daisies. Another one of my new David Austin roses, which hopefully next, next month will be beautiful. This spilling over the side here is Shasta, no, Santa Barbara daisy. And lavender. And I'm so excited that my artichoke made it through the winter. And I believe it's going to give me artichokes this year, which will be wonderful. I've tried growing artichokes for a few years, so lesson to every gardener, don't give up. Now this area that we just went through, I've just mulched and it looks beautiful. This next area, <laughs> I haven't quite gotten to yet. It is my job for this week. You will see that I repeat a lot of things because you find what works and um, it kind of makes the garden a bit more cohesive. Ranunculus are doing so well this year. This was my area of foxglove last year, and I'll link that video below. So you can tell what a difference a little bit of mulch makes just in neatening up, tidying up your garden. But I have several rose bushes here. This is the area that I thought was my shade garden last year. And that was because um, at this time of the year, the sun is in the sky in a place that um, does not provide direct sun here. And so I put primroses and my hellebore and everything in here. And then by midsummer, they were scorched and I had to move them. I have just started adding a few warm season vegetables to this raised bed planter. I have strawberries that I overwintered. I have a couple of tomatoes in here, onions. This area here I'm most excited about, well, two areas. This is where the rabbits were, if you remember from last year. We moved the rabbits, we still have them, we've just moved them, and we've added this little seating area which makes the perfect place for coffee in the morning, a glass of wine in the afternoon, evening, and just provides the loveliest view. pink jasmine um, my husband bought for me just to kind of provide a beautiful fragrance as we sit here. This area is the other area I'm super excited about. This is actually my cutting garden and wildflower bed. Everything in here in the back was planted from seed. Um, there's bachelor's buttons and poppies and hollyhocks and um, all kinds of things. 
The front area here are all tubers, corms, and bulbs. And you can see it is going to be, or is, a beautiful year for ranunculus. The daffodils are gone. I did plant a few tulips. And pretty much anything I could fit into a pot. That is the perennial bed here, first week of April. I hope you're finding time to make it into the garden. Hope you feel the sun shining on your back. And I will see you in the next video.